I look upon all of you now and proclaim, those who have never screwed up or received a vote, draw the first rock. Ah, oh, crap, not Pappy. The older demographic is gonna hate this. Wait, pause. How did we get into this mess in the first place? I thought the rule was that if the vote went to a deadlock tie, then those who received votes were immune from drawing rocks. So if the vote was two to two for Kathy and Nalia, why are Kathy and Nalia drawing rocks then? And how is this supposed to be a legit way to break a tie at the final four? Am I the only one who thinks this design needs to be looked into? Oh, right. Hello, internet. Seems I'm not alone in this thought process. Truth be told, Jeff Probst went on record nearly 20 years ago and admitted at this very moment, the purple rock draw at the final four of season four Marquesas, this infamous moment where Pascal was eliminated despite not receiving a vote against him all season, this debacle was a production mistake. They screwed up and Jeff said he realized they screwed up right as he was doling out the rocks. Now, Mr. Jeffrey, why didn't you just sort of not give him the rocks in the first place? Did you just pause the cameras? What the heck? Because it seems the producers didn't know what to do in the event of a tie at the final four. And as we saw in season one, they just kept re-voting until someone finally budged. I mean, what is a good idea for a tiebreaker when the numbers are that small? Do they just like get into a ring and knock each other's lights out? $5 on Kathy. The funny thing is that this mistake, the final four rock draw tiebreaker, wasn't ever known to be changed until six seasons later in season 10 Palau, when Tom forced a tiebreaker against Ian at the final four, and it was revealed that a fire making challenge would be the new tiebreaker format. Up until this moment, it was assumed that drawing rocks was still the case. And go figure, the article where Jeff remarks that the Marquesas rock draw was a mistake was just coincidentally in the preseason promo for Palau, because he knew this moment was about to be answered in a few months in the finale. Back in All Stars in season eight, two seasons prior, one of the major reasons that Jenna turns on Rupert at the final four is because of the assumed rock draw, which we don't even know if that was still in place at the time. Either way, according to Jeff, the producers realized their tie-breaking rule didn't work well with the final four, and so they owned up to their mistake, they fixed it, and then, 30 seasons later, they made fire making the go-to way to never have to worry about a tiebreaker vote ever again. I swear, everything can be made better with a fire making challenge. Rupert's a very smart player. I give him a lot of credit. He's probably conned Jenna into feeling bad about doing anything but pulling a rock. I would rather sit there and pick a rock than give them the smug satisfaction of knowing that they're guaranteed a spot. Let's rewind one season to season three, Africa, where the producers made a royal screw up when they didn't award Lex a point at the final four immunity challenge when he got the answer right. But nobody in the room or the tribal council set seemed to realize that or were able to confirm it until many months later. Basically, the challenge was trivia about the rest of the cast and going into the final question, Lex, Tom, and Kim were tied in points. The question asked was which female players didn't have any piercings. And while it's a little bit revealing and while Tom got it wrong, Kim said Kelly, which was correct. And then Lex said Lindsay, which was also correct. But Jeff told him he was wrong. This meant that Kim won immunity and was safe from the vote, which was kind of a problem because the three guys all planned to vote her out had she not won. And yeah, to make matters worse, Lindsay was voted out in the pre-merge, so she wasn't able to verify that Lex's answer was actually correct. And I don't know why, but the producers seemed to think that she had a piercing for some reason. Once the finale episode aired live, Lindsay told the producers that she actually didn't have any piercings. Lex got the answer right. He should have been awarded a point and gone to a tiebreaker against Kim for immunity. Is this the tiebreaker where they fight for it? And because Kim was immune, Tom was voted out that night and then Kim won immunity at the final three as well, but there's no guarantee that she's even there if the producers hadn't screwed up. To remedy this, the producers decided to award both Lex, who got third place, and Tom, who got fourth, with the same prize as Kim, who was the runner-up. They each got $100,000, about $15,000 more than what Lex was going to get for third. This is easily one of the biggest mistakes the producers have ever made, and look, I'm not here to judge, I'm just here to point out where you screwed up. Which female survivor does not have anything pierced, including her ears. 
Kim wrote Kelly. That's correct. Lex. Lindsay, you're wrong. You're out of the game. Kim, congratulations. Well earned. A slightly less serious mistake occurred during season seven, Pearl Islands at the final seven, the infamous dead grandma lie episode. At the immunity challenge, Jeff declared Burton as the winner, gave him the immunity scabbard, and then sent the tribe on their merry way back to camp. And then the music changed, and it turned out Jeff made a mistake. The challenge itself was all about spelling. The players were given three words, Survivor Pearl Islands, and they had to rearrange these letters to spell 20 different words. The rules were simple. They had to spell 20 words of specific lengths. They couldn't use plurals. And if you made even one mistake after you told Jeff that you were finished, you were eliminated. We saw Krista make a mistake and get eliminated. Then we saw Tijuana do the same and then fair play, a lot of mistakes. I actually paused to see what these players did wrong and Krista misspelled lavender, Tijuana used the word nails, a plural, and fair play misspelled sandal. And then Burton said he was finished and Jeff checked his board and yeah, Burton was a challenge beast and there he goes, winning yet another challenge. Except it turned out that Burton screwed up too. The word he misspelled on the board? He misspelled liaison. He was missing an I. This challenge is pretty much the only reason I know how to spell liaison correctly. So now Burton was eliminated too, leaving only Lil, Sandra, and Dara. The producers then had to run a second heat with just the three women, and they had one minute to spell as many words as they could with the phrase outwit, outplay, outlast. Dara ended up winning with a couple more words than Sandra, but I also decided to go back and freeze the frame for the three of them during the first round to see if they had misspelled anything as well, and while Sandra did initially spell surrender wrong, she did erase it and find herself in the clear. However, uh, Lil's final board was just rife with plurals. If I freeze the frame, I can make out livers, lovers, pairs, and I'm pretty sure that one says Earls. Likely predicting Earls multiple wins after he returns for season 50 and runs the table. Basically what I'm saying is that Dara could have Mario Party Luigi'd herself into winning this challenge by just doing nothing because everyone else was making mistakes and knocking themselves out left and right. Burton wins immunity. Nicely done. Thank you. Once again, you're safe from tonight's vote. Yo, survivors, come back. I didn't catch it. Liaison has another eye. That, I'm sorry, is not yours. All right, we've got two more production mistakes to talk about. And since we're so focused on the old school, let's just go back to school and remind ourselves that meddling with endangered species and nature conservations protected under Australian and international law is not okay. You don't do that. And if you do happen to do that, you probably don't want to film it and broadcast yourself doing it to nearly 30 million people. Right, Jeff? Right, Mark Burnett? In episode 10 of season two, The Australian Outback, the reward challenge gave the players a trip to the Great Barrier Reef in Australia. Colby and Jerry went on a honeymoon from hell where they enjoyed the chance to snorkel in the waters, relax on the sand, eat some chocolates, and just chat about life. It seemed pleasant enough, certainly nothing illegal, right? And when Colby gets back to camp, we see him share with the rest of the tribe a bit of coral from the reward. He gives each player their own piece, some memorabilia to take home. All of it was harmless and a nice gesture by Colby. He's just playing that social game to the best of his ability. Unfortunately for Colby, what he just did was illegal. Being a nice guy, believe it or not, right to jail. Yeah, um, the coral in the reef is considered an endangered species and under Australian and international law, you can't mess with the reef like that. Y you can't just pocket it. And when you broadcast that to your audience, to the country, to 30 million people, it kind of sends a bad message. It sets a bad example. Mark Burnett was deeply apologetic for what happened after the fact. He said it was an honest mistake on the producer's part. And I guess he got let off the hook by the Australian government as they joked about feeding him to the dingoes. Wait, could a dingo fight be the tiebreaker? I brought a little bit of the reef back to you. <laughs> Everybody gets their own piece of coral. This one is keys and it has a little empty space, kind of like the one between his ears. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank I you. wish y'all could have been there. This, this is so cool. And so the last mistake is very much a game design mistake that has thankfully been remedied since the very early days when it popped up like 
every other episode. I am talking about how the producers during season one and season two didn't seem to always balance the challenges to account for tribe numbers. You know how whenever a tribe is ahead in numbers and they go to the challenge and Jeff says they have to sit someone out because they have too many people? Yeah, that rule makes sense. One tribe is eight, the other is seven, so to keep it fair, the tribe with more people sits one person out. Except, uh, if you rewatch Borneo and the Australian Outback, you may notice this doesn't always seem to be the case. I took stock of every imbalance challenge during these seasons, and there are 11 total challenges where the tribes weren't balanced. And of those 11, six of them didn't follow the rule to keep the competing numbers equal. For example, as early as episode two of the entire show, episode two of Borneo, the players had to eat bugs, and if even one person couldn't do it, that tribe would lose immunity. Pagong was up in numbers 8 to 7, and yet all 8 players had to compete. Like, why not just sit one person out from consuming this fine delicacy? And you might think, well, uh, maybe they just didn't have this rule yet. But then, two episodes later, the producers create a relay race for the immunity challenge, and Pagong is up in numbers 7 to 6, and Ramona on Pagong ends up not participating in the challenge. It was a relay race where you could definitely have seven people compete, but the producers had Pagong sit someone out, which I think is fair to Tagi. Likewise, the episode six immunity challenge was limited so only four players could compete, and the producers correctly had Pagong sit two people out and Tagi sit out one to keep it balanced. So there was a rule that I guess was being adjusted on a whim? But then we fast forward to season two, and the first four imbalanced number challenges are all left uncorrected. Ogakor didn't sit anyone out in the waterfall jumping challenge in episode two, or the food eating challenge later in the same episode. Meanwhile, Kucha is up in numbers by episode four and doesn't sit anyone out in the slide puzzle or the trivia immunity challenge. And then we get to episode five where Kucha is up two members and the producers seemingly now have Kucha sit out two people at the reward challenge because it would have been a major advantage to have two extra people in this one. And then to my surprise, at the immunity challenge in this episode, the producers actually acknowledge the advantage and disadvantage of having more people in the challenge. And weirdly, Jeff tells Kucha they have to run their entire tribe in the challenge because it wouldn't make a difference. Which, to that I say, just have them sit two people out. You've already done that before. Why not keep it balanced? The rules here are so flimsy and all over the place, and I think it likely is to give the producers wiggle room to do whatever they want. Hey, this challenge is now only good for five people, so you can only have five people. But now this challenge is arbitrarily for as many people as you have, so you're all involved. Tough shit, Roger. Thankfully, the producers began to correct this mistake in season three Africa when they told every tribe to sit players out depending on the numbers and balance, regardless of what the challenge was. And it's been that way ever since. Kucha, because there's no obvious advantage or disadvantage to having more members in this, you'll run with full seven. All right, we'll get going. Samburo, because you guys have one extra member, somebody has to sit this one out. And remember, you can't sit the same person out in back-to-back -back challenges. And those are five times the Survivor producers screwed up. Actually, technically, it's more like 15, but, you know, who's counting? Sometimes they affected the game, other times they affected the law, but either way, at least they have since learned and have never made another mistake for the rest of the show's history. He said with a straight face. So let me know what you think about these moments and uh, any others you think that I should talk about if I were to make another video. Wait, but I thought they never screwed up again. It is kind of nice to know that these were all earlier in the show's run, at least. A big thanks to my patrons for all your support, for keeping me in my lane and not letting me screw up too much. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to uh, grab a goodie bag on your way out. I I've heard there's like a purple rock in one of them. And I will see you in the next one. Once I petition that every tiebreaker be resolved with a fight with dingoes. I don't recall that it happens if it's a tie in the final four. Um, how does that work? Then if it goes to a, another tie, then man, we're gonna have to draw rocks? The jury? We fight for it?